estudentes, fourth graders of Lawrence Family Development Charter School. We are ready to embark on a lesson on technology and engineering based on our book, A Reminder for Emily. Tomorrow we're going to talk about you know, the book specifically as, as to what the problem is and how she can solve the problem. But before we get into it, we're going to prepare you to uh, understand the, the tools required to solve a problem. And when you're solving a problem, we say that the problem is solved by the use of technology, okay? The engineer is the one that designs the technology. Can anyone tell me the different types of engineers there might be? Sophia? A civil engineer. A civil engineer? Pretty good. Do you know what a civil engineer does? No, but that's a really common engineer. Does anyone know what a civil engineer does? You do? They design something and then um, actual construction workers build it. That's right. So the civil engineer might design a bridge or a railway station and then construction workers carry it out. Just like an engineer might uh, design a car and then a mechanic or you know the people in the uh, auto plant will assemble it and put it together. So what is a definition of technology? Something that makes it easier. That's right. Something that's designed to make life easier or uh, to solve a problem. So. This brings us to the fun part of the lesson, okay? We're gonna, I'm gonna hand out these mystery bags, all right? And, and I, I don't want you to open them up yet, but you'll have a chance to, to go through the mystery bag and discover what's in there. We're gonna have to differentiate in the mystery bag what technology is and what, what, um, what items in there do not represent technology, okay? So before we take anything out of the bag, let's uh, put our names on this. Everyone has a worksheet? Thank you, sir. Everyone should have an item on their desk. I'm not gonna say what this is. Don't yell at what it is, okay? But I want you to make your best guess or a hypothesize what the object is, okay? So don't, I'm not asking you to tell me what this is, but if you're not sure what it is, then that's brave of you to choose something that you don't know what it is. Make your best guess as to what it is, okay? Illustrate it and then tell us what it's used for. Wow, you guys know about these objects already. I thought I was gonna stump some of you. I should have put in more difficult objects, like something from the space shuttle. Okay, so you have about a minute to finish the worksheet. Dorothy, what do you have? I'll write for you. What's the, th what's the, hold up what you have in your hand. Okay, does anyone know what the, the name of this is? Yeah. What did you write? Me? Yeah. A gator clip. A gator clip. Anyone else have that? Yeah, they're called alligator clips, right? Because see the little teeth on there? What can the alligator clip be used for? Go ahead. Um, if you like, if, you, if your car goes down, you could like get on a, another car and you could put the other thing. Yeah, a gigantic alligator clip of these things called jumper cables so you can go from one battery to the other battery to give your car energy so you could get home. All right, next one, soil. Soil, first of all, we have um, an issue here with soil. Is soil technology or not a technology? No. Not very good. Why do you know that? How do you know that? Is it made by humans? No. No. All right, at this point, what I'd like to do is have you guys flip your, your paper over. So the object of this the side of the worksheet is to kind of sum up what we know about technology and differentiate between what is technological and what is non-technological, okay? So what I'd like you to do on here is follow the directions, okay? And you're gonna circle all the items which you think are an example of technology. Good job. There's a few more, Zoe. There's a few more things that are invented by humans on that piece of paper. So we would use the, uh, the prefix non-technological, right? They're non they're not man-made, so they're non-technological. And what are those four items? Give me one of those four things. Give me one. A bird. A bird. Can we make a, a fake bird? No. no. No, we could make a model that might replicate a bird, put it on a string and maybe it can fly around. But nature has perfected things and anything that's non-technological is made by nature. Can Sophia. Can I write the definition? Yes, we need a working definition for Technology. So Sophia is going to try again to come to the board. Okay. 
Thank you. Jasmine, can you read that please for us? Technology means something that a human makes. Okay, technology is something that a human makes. Is that enough of a definition? Can we build on that? Yeah. Is it correct so far? Yeah. It's good. So that's our base. We can build on that. So uh, let's see. Why don't we have Jasmundo go to the board and add to it? So let's, let's keep building on this definition because the definition of technology should be something that comes from you. Okay? Technology means something that a human makes to either solve a problem or benefit benefit humanity. Wow, Jasmine, pretty good. And before we get into the book review, let's just discuss two important words we used last week. Can anyone help me uh, come up with a, a definition for the word technology? In your own words, what do you think technology means? I think technology means when um, you build something instead of like getting it from nature. Okay, you could get the material from nature to yeah. build it, but what's the purpose of building something? To help, um, to help solve problems and make them our life easier. Exactly. Okay, so let's get into the book itself. Our main character is Emily. So let's talk about where she's from first of all. Can anyone point to me where Australia is? Dorothy, come on up and point to where Australia is. Now I want you guys to flip your packets over here, take a look at the world map, and I want you to label where Australia is, and I also want you to label where the United States is. Pretty good. Let's hear it for Dorothy. Okay, so let's get our world map out. You can label Australia, you can circle it. Also, I'd like you to find the uh, United States, and maybe you can find the country that your family's from. For example, if your family's from Morocco, try to find Morocco on the map. Okay, so let's get back to the story. Well, let's turn to page 20 in our book. <clears throat> Would you like to read out loud? Go ahead. Some materials are conductors and others aren't. Can I have someone come to the board and write some materials that are conductors and non-conductors? I want you guys to feed him some words for conductors. We know that one conductor is really dangerous. We went over it and we just read about it in this paragraph. What's the first one that's a conductor but we don't want to use in this case? And that is what? Water. water. Okay, so go ahead. On a conductors we can write water. Can you come up with a non-conductor? Or what they call an insulator? Go ahead. Plastic. Plastic. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do at this point is to <clears throat> go to the back page of your packet. Okay, and we really have to get a good understanding of the engineering design process. So your word bank is going to come from the engineering design diagram. I want you to take the next three or four minutes to complete questions one through five. Okay, Dorothy, read the question out loud and then give us your answer. Emily used the ask system when she talked to Pete about how this aligns Nice. So, Evan, did you have ask for number two? Good job. I like the plan step because the plan step, which is the correct answer for, for number four, is that you're drawing a diagram. You're taking your, your thoughts, okay, uh, in your imagination, you're putting them onto paper. Now, in the book, we know that Pete has his workshop, but he has only a limited amount of materials. He doesn't work for NASA, and he has all this all expensive stuff. He has wires and bulbs and alarms and some source of power. So when you're doing your plan, you have to restrict your plan to the materials that you have. Okay, good. Nice job on that worksheet. I think we're going to flip to the next page now and talk about some of the... Uh, the voc vocabulary. Can you guys take, say, three minutes and try to figure out what uh, answers one through six are? Okay. The steps that engineers use to design something to solve a problem. Um, engineering design process. Okay. Can you point to somewhere in this room that illustrates the engineering design process, please? Someone point to that. Yes. We need to refer to this all the time. So we've already gone through from from ask all the way to improve 
in the story without even building anything yet, but you're going to refer to this when you're building your own alarm system. Who can do number three? It's a substance or a body that allows electricity to pass through it. You said that word a lot today. Conductor. Conductor, good. So the word con means with, so it allows electricity to pass through it or with it, okay? And number six, number six, what is the number six? What type of engineer is going to design um, electrical system? Go ahead. Electrical engineer. Okay, let's hear it for today. I think the kids, when they read these books, they feel empowered by uh, these different cultures that they, that they learn about only because they see that in different cultures we have some of the same problems. I think what the kids take away is they, they get to sympathize with the character because they realize there are aspects of the character that are much like themselves.